Which flower builds black soil fastest? Wheat versus rice versus corn? Yeah, the results are actually pretty shocking. If you're anything like me, you already know the thrill of discovering something, anything that boosts soil life fast. And, when it comes to building rich, dark, biologically active soil, few things surprise gardeners more than flour. Yep, simple baking flour. Wheat, rice, and corn flour are quietly becoming secret weapons in the soil regeneration world. I've tested them myself. And honestly, the results were shocking. Flour isn't fertilizer. It's food. Not for the plants, but for the microbes. And microbes are the engine that converts poor soil into living, breathing black gold faster than almost anything. Today we're going deep into how and why flour works, which type works faster, and how to avoid mistakes that waste your time or hurt your garden. By the end of this article, you'll know exactly which flour is best, how to apply it, and how to turn even pale, exhausted dirt into rich, dark humus, quickly, cheaply, and naturally. Every grain-based flour contains carbohydrates, proteins, and organic compounds that feed soil microbes. As those communities grow, they break down organic matter, build stable carbon, improve soil structure, and release nutrients, especially nitrogen, phosphorus, and trace minerals. Healthy soil has like billions of microbes per teaspoon. Poor soil? Well, it has almost none. If you've ever dug into hard, pale, lifeless dirt, you've seen the difference. It's not the minerals that are missing, it's the biology. Flower flips that switch. You're basically firing up an army of microbial builders, bricklayers, and excavators. The magic happens because microbes multiply incredibly fast when fed simple carbohydrates, and flour is just full of accessible carbs. Think of it kind of like sourdough starter, but, you know, underground. But here's where it gets interesting. Not all flowers feed soil microbes equally. Wheat flour is the flour I recommend for beginners and experienced soil builders alike. It produces extremely fast biological activity, often within 48 to 72 hours. If you've ever mixed flour with water and left it out, you've seen how quickly it ferments. That same energy explodes underground. Wheat flour contains high levels of wheat starch, which is rapidly digestible by bacteria and fungi. This makes wheat flour ideal for kickstarting microbial activity in tired soils. If your garden is dull, dry, and sluggish, wheat flour wakes it up fast. But what I love most is what it does to soil texture. Within weeks, the soil becomes darker and crumbly, almost like coffee grounds. Earthworms move in, aggregates form, water retention improves. If you want to test just one flower, start with wheat, it gives visible transformation quickly. Rice flour works differently. It doesn't explode with immediate microbial growth like wheat does, but it builds a deeper, more stable population over time. Rice flour has a lower gluten and protein content, and its starches break down more gradually. This makes rice flour a perfect long-term fuel for microbial diversity. In my own trials, rice flour didn't produce fast color changes or instant structure improvements, but after four to six weeks, the soil was richer and more balanced than the wheat-treated soil. It's especially effective in sandy or low organic gardens that need slow, steady biological scaffolding. Rice flour supports fungi growth more than wheat does, and fungi are essential to form long-term humus. If you're gardening in hot climates or working with raised beds that dry out quickly, rice flour will feed microbes deeper and slower, perfect for sustainability. Corn flour sits between wheat and rice in both speed and depth. Its starches are slower to unlock than wheat but faster than rice. It creates strong bacterial action early, followed by fungal growth. It's also higher in carbon relative to nitrogen, which means it helps build long-lasting carbon pathways in the soil. In my tests, especially using homemade corn flour rather than polished white cornmeal, it produced incredibly dark soil with strong structure over, you know, three to four weeks. The one thing to note, corn flour can attract ants more easily than wheat or rice, especially when applied dry. For this reason, I prefer mixing corn flour with water into a paste or, uh, 
diluted slurry. For gardeners who want both quick improvement and long-term soil health, corn flour is a powerful middle choice. Let's get right to it. Out of the three flours, here's the speed ranking. First, wheat flour. It gives you the fastest visible transformation. Second, corn flour. It's pretty fast too, but you get a deeper structure. And third, rice flour. It's slower to transform, but it brings lasting benefits. If your goal is to turn pale dirt into dark rich soil as quickly as possible, wheat is the clear winner. When I use wheat flour, I start seeing color changes by day three and structural changes by week two. But long term, rice and corn can actually outperform wheat in building humus that sticks around for years. So here's my soil power recommendation. Use wheat flour for fast results and, you know, add rice or corn flour for resilience and depth. Together, they create thriving microbial layers that transform soil from the surface down to its core. This process is incredibly simple, but honestly, there are three important rules to get right. Rule number one. Moisture is everything. Microbes just can't work in dry soil, you know? So, always wet the bed before and after. Rule number two, less is more. If you use too much flour, it can actually cause anaerobic zones, which you definitely want to avoid. Rule number three, always mix flour lightly into the soil. Leaving flour exposed on top, well, that just invites pests. Okay, so here's the method I use. Start by sprinkling about one tablespoon of flour per square foot. If your soil is extra poor, you'll want to use two tablespoons, but definitely no more than that. Just scatter the flour, then lightly rake or scratch it into the top two to three centimeters of soil. After that, water deeply, then just leave it alone. If you want to, you know, really supercharge the process, try mixing flour with compost tea or lactobacillus serum. This actually inoculates the flour with microbes, instead of waiting for microbes to find it on their own. Within just a few days microbial activity will spike, the soil warms up, carbon increases, and before long worms arrive. So, one summer, I divided a bed into thirds, each section received a different flour, wheat, rice, or corn, I planted kale across all three. The wheat section took off first. In just three days, fungal threads were already visible. After two weeks, the kale stems were thicker and the leaf color was richer than the control bed. The corn section transformed more slowly but after about four weeks, the soil was noticeably darker and more aerated, it just felt spongy and alive. So, the rice section actually took the longest. But after about six weeks, it was hands down the most balanced bed. The soil structure was just incredible honestly. Moisture retention was perfect too. The kale in the rice bed grew the slowest, but ended up being the biggest by far. The lesson here was totally clear. Wheat wakes up soil life quickly, but rice and corn they really build the foundation for the long haul. The only real danger with flour is, you know, using too much. When microbes consume flour, they actually require nitrogen. Too much flour forces microbes to pull nitrogen from the soil, which can temporarily starve your plants. So, if your plants turn yellow after applying flour, don't panic. It's not actually damage, it's just biology at work. Just add a nitrogen source, like grass clippings, compost, or even some diluted urine, and balance is restored. Also, don't bury flour deeply, always keep it within the top few centimeters, where there's plenty of oxygen. Avoid using flour alone in compacted clay beds, you'll want to break the soil up with organic matter first. Flour really works best in aerated soil, not mud. Oh, and never pour flour directly on plant leaves, it can actually encourage fungi. Most gardeners are searching for the perfect fertilizer, but the truth is, real soil power comes from biology, not bags of NPK. 
Flour may seem strange at first, but it works. It feeds the engine that drives nutrient cycling, soil building, and plant health. In a world full of expensive soil products, it's almost funny that one of the cheapest and most powerful tools is sitting quietly in the kitchen cupboard. If your soil is dull, if you want it darker, richer, more alive, try flour. Test wheat, rice, and corn. Watch what happens. You'll be amazed at how quickly life wakes up. If you found this useful, don't forget to subscribe to Soil Power on YouTube and share this with other gardeners who love building soil naturally. Let's bring dead dirt back to life, together.